what's up everybody this is Tammy welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning sprite kit in this part of the series you'll learn about sprite kit actions actions allow you to do things like rotate scale or even change a sprites position over time the class that handles actions is named SK action seems like a good name right with SK actions you have a variety of methods available for example you can create a move to action that moves a sprite to a certain position over a specified period of time. You can use actions to have your sprite follow a path at a certain speed using the follow path speed method. You can also rotate it, scale it, and even use actions to fade your sprite in and out. Another thing you can do with actions is chain them together to create a sequence. Here we're creating two move to actions and then running them. In addition to action sequences, you can also create run block actions. Run block actions allow you to run your own block of code in a sequence. For example, let's say you want to log a message after a certain action occurs. Simply call run block and pass in a block of code to execute. Then add that action to your sequence of actions and you're all set. Of course, we won't get to use all of the available actions in this video tutorial, but we will get to use a few of them. In fact, let's get to it. Okay, of course, before we can add any actions to the granny and the cats, we first need to spawn them onto the scene. Because we want our granny and our cats to spawn in random locations on our scene, we're going to create an extension that has two functions inside of it to help us generate random numbers. We'll create this extension and those two functions inside myutils.swift. So head over to that file, scroll down to the bottom, and then add the following code. So you can see here that one function returns a random number and another function returns a different random number, but this time within a minimum and a maximum range. Now that we have our random functions ready and waiting, let's head back over to the gamescene.swift file and start working on our spawn enemy function. I'm going to create this function right underneath the did move to view function. So on line 69, I'm creating a new SK sprite node and I'm passing in an image named enemy. That's actually our granny image. Then I'm setting the position, but you'll notice that my X position sets my granny to be on the far right hand side of the screen, while my Y position uses that random function and I'm setting a minimum and maximum so I know that it spawns within my playable area. And then finally, I'm adding that to the scene. Now there are a few things that I want to do after I spawn the enemy. The first thing I want to do is I want to move it across the scene. Now you saw how we moved the zombie using the update method. In this method, we're going to use an SK action, the move to X action, that will help us move our granny from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side of the screen. So here, I'm just using the move to X and I'm saying, hey, move it all the way over to the left hand side of the screen and do it over a course of two seconds. Now I want to add another action that removes the sprite once it reaches the left hand side of the screen. Luckily, SK action remove from parent will do that for us. Now all we need to do is run these two actions and we can do so using a sequence of actions and it looks like this. So here on line 80, you can see that I'm using the SK action sequence and then I'm passing in an array of our actions. And in this case, it's the action move and the action remove. So first it will move across the scene and then once it gets to the left hand side, it'll remove the sprite from the parent. So now that we have our spawn enemy function created, how exactly do we get this to run? Sure, we can run it from the did move to view. We can just simply call spawn enemy, but this is something that we want to occur over time. We want more than one granny to spawn. So we'll be using a repeat action forever, and then we'll run 
a sequence of actions. And in this sequence of actions, we're going to have a run block and a wait for duration. And we'll do that in the did move to view. So let's scroll up there and then add some code and we'll see what it looks like. And I'm going to add this code right before I draw the playable area. So here you can see that we're running an action on the scene. And this action that we're running, it's a repeat action forever. And the action that we happen to be repeating forever is a new sequence of actions. And one of the sequences of actions is a run block. And you'll notice here, this is on line 66. I'll highlight it for you. This here line tells it to run a block, right? And the block that we wish to run is the spawn enemy. Once we run it, we'd like to wait for duration, and that's happening on line 67. And after two seconds, rerun that entire action again. Again, repeat the action forever. So let's build and run and see what this looks like. So you can see here that about every two seconds, the granny runs across the screen. And you'll also notice that she's appearing randomly in the scene. Okay, so now that we've kind of got an idea of actions, let's go ahead and create a new function to spawn our cats. Now the cats won't be moving, they'll just be popping up in random locations. We're going to put this function right below spawn enemy. So once again, on line 88, we're creating a new SK sprite node. We're passing in the image name cat. We're setting a random position. This time we're setting both a random X and Y position. And then we're setting the cat scale to be zero. We're then adding it to the scene. The reason we're setting the scale to zero is because we're going to use the SK action scale two, and we're going to set the scale back to 1.0 over a 0.5 second duration. This will make the cat sort of scale into view. We're also going to rotate the cat using the Z rotation. And then we're going to add some additional actions where we wait and we'll scale it back out. Then we'll move it from the parent and then we'll run all of those actions together in a sequence. Let's go ahead and put the code down and see exactly what it is I'm talking about. So here you can see on line 97, I'm using the scale two action that I just mentioned. I'm rotating the cat using the Z rotation property on the sprite. Then I'm waiting for duration. Then I'm setting another scale two action. Again, this is on line 100 and I'm setting the scale back to zero. So the cat will essentially explode in, stay for a little while and then, you know, scale back out and disappear. Once his scale is back to zero, I want to remove him from the parent. And then I have to create a set of actions, right? You see that here on line 102, the actions I'm setting up is basically an array. I'm saying appear, wait, disappear, remove from parent. That is my array. And then I'm running the sequence of actions. So it looks a little bit different. Whereas in the enemy one, I passed in the individual actions as an array. I'm still passing it as an array, but I'm creating the array first. So either way will work. With that done, I can now call this spawn cat action from my did move to view, similar to what I did with the granny one. So once again, you can see here on line 69, I'm running an action and I'm creating the action. The action is repeat the action forever. It's a sequence of actions. And the sequence of actions I would like to run is the run block, which calls the spawn cat and the wait for duration, which is waiting for one second. Let's build and run and see what this looks like. So you can see here that the cats are showing up onto the scene. They're starting really tiny. Eventually you'll start to see them get really small and disappear once they see that one that just disappeared. And once he disappears, he gets removed from the scene. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to rotate, wiggle, and group some actions. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.